point, what I have said so far is the literature lacks the perspective, the conceptual perspective of the MOOC forum. And that's problematic because then we can't get an understanding of the group level activity of forum analysis. And that means we can't really evaluate MOOC forum activity. That's what I was trying to tell you. What this study does is that it takes a particular conceptual approach to how it analyzes forum data on a MOOC. It looks at a subgroup of posters, which I refer to as a forum core, which basically is a group of returning posters, people who post on the forum in any three or more weeks and receive timely replies. By timely, I mean before the content of the next week changes and the next assignment comes in. So while the question is still relevant to the asker. This group is about 2.5 on average, about 2.5% of all forum users, that is posters and viewers. Um, and if you heard a talk yesterday by Mina, the analysis that Tobias and Mina have done there basically is taking a different approach, but by the numbers that they have shown of their size of the core users and by the number of posts, content posts their group has produced, I'm pretty sure there's a large overlap between what we're looking at. We're basically applying different approaches to identify a very similar group of users, core users, people who return and use the platform over time. I, we conceptualize this group in this study as an identity-based community. Now, what is that? Every time you say the word community, if it's not a social network analysis clustering, then what really we're talking about is a web of relationships of a particular quality, meaning that there is an underpinning trust on a dyadic level very often. That's, I can't use that thing, I'm sorry, I have to move. So communities in formal online education is what we normally associate when we hear the word community. That's bond-based attachment to the group. It means I know you, you're my classmate, so we've worked together for a long time. I'm, you can expect a benefit or return, an emotional support from me. We all know one another. It's a small group we develop over time. We form attachment to the group based on the dyadic trust. Now, that's not the only approach to communities, actually. There are two types of attachment. Um, and another one is called identity-based attachment to the group, meaning that I don't have to have uh, and one-to-one -one relationship with everybody in the solar community to be attached to that community, actually. And empirically, it has been shown that the engagement and contribution to a community that's based on different types of attachment doesn't differ. So I don't have to be your friend to contribute. I can just be as strongly connected to the purpose of the group to contribute as much. And so based on the previous empirical work, where we have shown that Student participation in MOOC forums differ. So some people only show up once, other people stay, meaning that we have different levels of commitment. Only part of the group can develop attachment. So that's the forum core. Then based on our previous studies where we show that there's low reported dyadic co-occurrence, meaning that people do not meet often. They meet on average, I'll talk about it later, three to nine times maximum 100, but we're talking about a power law distribution. So three to nine times on average is rare. However, they do report high group cohesion. So how does that work? How do they form a group if they don't really, if they don't form into personal familiarity? And then the third evidence, the third piece that validates this uh, conceptualization comes from another empirical study, qualitative research of social non-task posts. That's posts that contain self-disclosure and norm negotiations. So that discourse is present in MOOC forums, and in fact, it is central to some of the forum cores, regardless of a very low volume. So we can have like five of those conversations in the entire MOOC forum, but you'll have a very high number of forum core members contributing to them, meaning that there is a shared ground that they're negotiating within this very few posts. So based on these uh, different pieces that we have done, we make a claim here that forum core can be approached as an identity-based community. Now, what are the implications of that? Well, there are quite a few. Uh, informal internet online communities have been studied before extensively, and they have been conceptualized as identity-based communities. There's a lot of literature talking about how they operate, and their network structure has been measured. So the most important message is that informal uh, Internet informal online communities, for example, Yahoo Q&A, 
uh, groups or the very early studies from 1995, they talk about um, electronic network within a large corporation where the lawyers were exchanging advice. People didn't know one another. So we're talking about, again, a large group, very loosely connected group of people exchanging information. Um, those networks are characterized by a particular structure. The patterns that describe that structure are two, well, three really, which is direct reciprocity, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, or um, and low indirect reciprocity. I give to you, you give to the next person. Like in peer review, right? We don't really peer review one another, we review somebody else. You pay it forward. So pay it forward is low, I scratch your back, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, is high, no preferential attachment. Based on that, in this study that uses data from 10 edX MOOCs run by Delft University of Technology in 2013, 2014, STEM disciplines, different sizes, and different facilitation strategies, we modeled the network structure. Now, I have to spend a few times talking about how the network was constructed because I do feel that this is the core piece of every social network study that we have seen there. So, this is the thread. Person A, re person B replied to person A, person C replied to, we really don't know who person C replied to. Just because it's a second level post, we don't know. It's an edX interface. If you've seen the edX interface, it's not very clear. And because it's an identity-based community, people don't reply to people. People reply to the group. So based on that assumption, every precede, every person under, the ties are built to everybody before them. Now that's a discussion thread of a MOOC forum. And these are the forum core members because we're not analyzing everybody because I don't care about this guy. He only showed up once and asked about the homework. He has no continuity, no shared history. He's not a community member. He has no attachment. Why would I want to know how he in interacts? So this is A, B, C, D. This is another discussion thread. This is user or poster one, two, three, four, five. And this is a mixed one where I have A, B, 3D, and E. I'm just sort of to model this a little bit. So when I extract that, just these three discussions, I get a structure like this. Just to tell you, I just want to show that just because we have a lot of ties going back, it doesn't mean that we get, we can predict what this will look like. And these are known valued, but because it's a subset of learners, and I have studied the form core in other studies, I know that on average, the two, these two users, core curve, these two posters per curve on a median from three to nine with a maximum of 100 or 700 depending on the course. Now, this is what it looks like. I thought I should put an obligatory network slide just because <laughs> some, um, so the, these are just uh, samples of the four networks. Now, how do you make sense of that? We used exponential uh, random graph modeling. I don't know how you're familiar with that. I'm not gonna go into technical details. I'll just explain in, simple terms what that methodology does. That methodology is a statistical analysis of network data, meaning that it deals with units that are interdependent, which is opposite from a conventional statistical analysis where you have to comply to the assumptions, uh, assumption of independency between the units you're analyzing. And the main question that is asked in ERGMS is, what is the probability of this configuration network pattern to occur beyond chance to generate a network that is similar to the one that I'm analyzing? So basically how it works, I conceptualize a set of patterns and then I run a model and I see whether whatever I generate looks any similar to what I have. First, the model has to converge. Just because it converged doesn't mean that it works, so then you uh, do a network, uh, conduct a network, oh sorry, goodness of fit, and then if that works well too, then you report the parameters. All of that is in the paper. We model these parameters based on the previous research. So what we assumed is we have a direct reciprocity pattern. We assume that this is high because this is the default in informal and internet online communities that are identity-based communities, just like a forum core. But how does that, from a dyadic level, does this make the network clustered over time, because that would inter indicate that more people talk to more people. You, you see, you remember that thing I showed you, that there's not much interaction from one to one, so do we, does the network, does the information spread across the network amplify? 
And we also controlled for the uh, activity of level within the network. I used the measure developed by uh, Tobias Hacking and uh, his colleagues uh, in reach and outreach um, of the uh, forum activity. And uh, based on that measure, that measure was clustered to control the node attributes. So basically, the models had direct reciprocity configuration, mutual exchange at triad level. There's a Semelian ties statistic in StatNet package, for those who know what I'm talking about. And the node factor in StatNet to control for the activity that was a clustering of the in-reach and outreach measure. The results. I have two minutes. OK. So the results. I'm going to only present the results for the networks that were unmoderated and the ones that were highly moderated. You can read the rest in the paper. The most important thing, unmoderated networks, exactly the same pattern as we see in internet online communities. We see high reciprocity and low triadic exchange. Highly moderated networks, we see the opposite, actually. We see low direct reciprocity and high triadic exchange, which indicates that the network starts to cluster. So which means that these people, the forum core members, over time start talking to one another and they start talking to one another in triads. So we observe the formation of the community in terms of the information flow. But this one is very peculiar, right? There are three courses, but this one doesn't have the same results. We have the same high direct reciprocity and low network amplification and clustering. And just, I believe that the reason for that is this. Uh, this is controlling for superposting activity. So there was uh, three controls for the activity of the learner, passive or low activity, moderate, and superposter. So this one has usually about three to seven people. So this person, and I plotted it in, log odds, uh, in odds just to show. These are these three courses. These are the odds of the pattern occurring within the network. And so this is the course that does not have the reverse dynamic in a highly facilitated course. But you can see that the super posters, three people in that course, sent ties that were almost 12 times likely to occur than from a moderate poster, meaning it was over-moderated. Basically, the moderators were giving the answers where somebody else could have taken place. That's my interpretation <coughs> of it. So where do we leave this? Well, I believe that these indicators work because I have been having a hard time making sense out of this data. I knew I could qualitatively distinguish between them, but I didn't have a good sense of how would I sort of demonstrate that. And to me, these indicators actually do show this range, the slight differences between the form activity. We also can assume that the unmoderated courses follow the same network structure as the internet online communities informal online communities. The structure gets reversed if the course gets facilitated, so we can see communities develop. And I'm talking communities with attachment to the group purpose, because there's been qualitative analysis on some of these courses. And there, is a, there appears to be this relationship between how do you moderate to start the direct reciprocity going, and when do you move away not to overtake for the network to cluster. Um, there are a few issues there. I'm happy to talk about them during the Q&A. And I would like to thank the Extension School of Open Online Learning at the Delta University of Technology who provided the data and, the, and my PhD funding to enabling me to be part of that. And um, I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you. We have 10 minutes for questions. I think what you're talking about is a little one step later, right? But the first part of the question, where is the instructor in here? The highly moderated course meant, wh what I meant here meant, means that 
there was a teacher present on the forum who was actively participating, and there were teacher assistants or community assistants. The moderate facilitation meant there was no teacher. So we really see the reverse pattern when there was a teacher present. Um, so if that answers your question, yes, we get the teacher presence not from the teacher assistants, but from the teacher. Um, are you likely to talk to other people if you're participating in this network? Well, that was the second part of the question. I, I don't have the data to answer that. Previous research in MOOCs showed there is no homophily. But I'm not sure we were looking at the right thing, so I'm, I'm just telling you what I know. And I wasn't modeling homophily. That was just a picture. Well, as I said, I didn't, we, the way it works is that I constructed the network in a way I have explained. That's what those networks looked like. And then based on my theoretical uh, approach, I, hypothesized that the direct reciprocity will be high and there may be some effect of the amplification of the network. So I have two components in my model plus the component that controls for activity. And based on that, I create a model that reproduces the structure that I compare to my network. It quantifies, what it does is it quantifies the probability of that pattern defining the tie formation. So that's basically what modeling does. I didn't really filter anything, I just, yeah. Yeah. I was wondering where that comes from. Is that just what sort of they all said they were doing, or was it measured? And it's a formal, uh, basically formal description. I mean, I know what was happening on the forum, right? I know that some forums had unmoderated forum meant that there was no instructor present, there was no TA present. Maybe the staff took a few Q and A's in the beginning, like where's the textbook, because you have to address a few things, but to a minimal extent, right? And then you have courses where you have TAs or, C, uh, or community TAs, and they're very active. I mean, the courses that have moderate uh, facilitation here, they were really vibrant. There was a lot of activity there, but there was no teacher. And then you have the third set. So it's really just who was working on the forum, not what they were doing. I wasn't looking at any granular, nothing beyond the formal, yeah. So I think that's an interpretation, right? So my interpretation of what's happening, and I haven't done it in a temporal, I haven't done temporal an analysis, but I, hypo I hypothesize that the presence of a teacher and the presence of the moderator in the beginning, the teacher motivates, but so does the moderator, because if I get a reply, then I am, I get an incentive to reply forward or to reply to somebody. So you get the reciprocity and the uh, two parts that weren't modeled here, but I modeled them in a different study, so you have two parts and direct reciprocity going, but then over time, you don't really need the teacher or the moderator to do that. In fact, you probably want to remove them for the network to cluster or for the amplification of the information flow to occur. No, because the theory doesn't really talk about educational communities in formal or open settings. The theory talks about informal internet-based uh, communities. Would the instructors appear in the triads also? 
Yes. Then, of course, there is a, a quite straightforward uh, explanation that, that, I mean, just you have the, the diet, the reciprocal situation, and then the instructor intervenes and forms the triad. Yeah. Right, but we see a higher number of Somalian triads within the network, so, and we have only one instructor, so we can't... Yeah, okay. so that would be interesting to characterize, to quantify also, what is the role of the instructor in these triads? Because that's just to, maybe to, to filter out the effects of just the ins instructor, him or herself, forming part of that. Um, that's, that's, so that was the question of understanding. You said there is no preferential attachment. I can fully understand that in these situations there is no preferential attachment on the level of a social network. But what I would expect, if you look into content and topics, that there would be preferential attachment on topics. Right, that's what I was uh, trying to say, is that the previous studies that have modeled networks showed no preferential attachment. But we, as I was making in my argument, we don't really know what we were yeah. modeling. So depending on how we conceptualize what kind of preferential attachment we're looking at, we might find it. I would... But you haven't been looking. I haven't. I would also assume that TAs and instructors get preferential attachment from the forum core because they are familiar. They do become recognizable over time. But I wasn't looking at that. But I would guess that there are attractive Well, this is SNA. It's just statistical, well, not the descriptive SNA, but uh, the statistical uh, uh, network analysis. No, what I mean is, is the more traditional. Okay, I think. There are simpler indicators that correlate with that because it's a set. I've been looking at other things. There are very simple things that also sort of demonstrate that. Uh, co-occurrence, dyadic co-occurrence is higher in courses and centrality of the uh, social non-task discussions to the forum core. They go hand in hand with the indicators of higher triadic um, exchange and lower direct reciprocity characterizing the network in the data I looked at, which is. Thank you very much.